Hello and welcome. The F-15C singular role is to clear the sky of enemy aircraft. It is purely an air-to-air -air bird. As the saying goes, not a pound for air to ground. At the heart of this air-to-air -air weapons platform is the Hughes ANAGP-63 all-weather multi-mode pulse Doppler fire control radar. And in the course of this mission, you will learn to control and interpret it in long-range scan or LRS mode. We will not be shooting anyone down today. In fact, we won't even lock up any aircraft. The goal of today's mission is much more modest. Before we even talk about killing your adversary, I want to make sure that you understand this radar's basic functioning. Either not knowing or misunderstanding the basics will kill you much faster than not having advanced skills. Let's start by looking at the Vertical Situation Display, or VSD, also known as the Radar Scope. With the radar turned off, the only information provided on the display are two forms of airspeed. The number in the lower right corner following the T is, well, er, it depends on which version of the sim you're flying. If you are flying LOMAC version 1.02 or earlier, then it's as it's supposed to be. It's our true airspeed, or TAS, T-A-S. That's our calibrated airspeed corrected for altitude and temperature. As such, it's the physical speed at which we are actually traveling through the air. But, unfortunately, the Flaming Cliffs add-on changed it, intentionally or not, to represent something similar to the indicated airspeed, or IAS. So, in versions 1.1 and beyond, it's a slightly lower number than the airspeed number that appears on the HUD. It no longer represents TAS as it should. The number in the lower left corner following the G is our ground speed, or GS. That number is mostly important for navigation. It's the speed at which we are moving over the ground. As such, it takes both TAS and any effects the wind has on our forward movement into consideration. If there's no wind, GS is the same as TAS. With a 20-knot tailwind, however, our GS will be 20 knots faster, etc., etc. But there's no wind today. These two numbers differ because I'm flying the Flaming Cliffs 1.12 cockpit. Okay, let's turn on the radar. Press the 2 key for the Long Range Scan, or LRS, air-to-air -air mode, and the I key to turn on the radar. Our VSD has now come to life. This gives us a top-down view of what's ahead of us. Our nose is at the bottom center. This vertical line is the center line of our aircraft extended out ahead of us. In the upper right corner is the range number. That number tells us how many nautical miles ahead of our aircraft we are actually looking. The default setting is 20 nautical miles, and the VSD displays from a low of 10 to a high of 160 nautical miles. Each of these horizontal lines subdivides the range displayed into fourths, so each line represents a quarter of the distance. At 20 nautical miles, 5, 10, 15, 20. But at 80 nautical miles, for instance, it'll be 20, 40, 60, 80. And there are two ways to change the rain displayed on the VSD. Manually with the plus and minus keys to decrease and increase the range respectively, or with the TDC, or Target Designator Cursor, this set of short double vertical lines. Moving it to either the top or bottom of the display will increase or decrease the range respectively. The idea is that a target at the current range limit will automatically be displayed more or less in the center of the succeeding range. On the left side of the VSD is the antenna elevation carrot and scale. The two circles represent the upper and lower altitudes being scanned by the radar in thousands of feet, these two numbers, at the position of the TDC. That last bit is important. As you move the TDC up and down the screen, you will see these numbers change. Here's why. Think of your radar scan as a cone, very narrow close to the aircraft and growing wider as the range increases. By checking the position of the TDC and noting the upper and lower limits of the radar scan, you will know what part of the sky you are seeing at that range. And, just as important, or perhaps even more so, how much of the sky you are not seeing. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you are changing the elevation of the radar cone as you move the TDC. You aren't. To raise or lower the scan volume of the cone itself, use the shift semicolon and shift period keys respectively.
control I recenters the scan. And one last note. The vertical volume is scanned in four distinct steps, moving from top to bottom. The step you are on at any given moment is indicated by the elevation caret. You can see it right here. Now look at the bottom of the screen. This scale depicts the range of our radar's horizontal sweep, with the moving caret showing where it is within that range. These two circles represent the azimuth, or horizontal limits, of the sweep. There are two possible settings. The default and current 60 degrees to either side of the center line for 120 degrees of full sweep, and the shorter 30 degrees to either side of center line with a 60 degree antenna sweep. You control the azimuth setting with the control plus and control minus keys. Notice that, at the latter setting, you are scanning the volume of air much faster both vertically and horizontally because you are searching less of the sky. This is good because it makes it easier to keep track of what's in front of you. But conversely, there is more of the sky that you are not seeing. So use it sparingly, and use it when you are sure of the situation and know that there aren't any surprises lurking about. Okay, back to the wide scan. Now that we've got some of the basics down, let's see what there is to see. Bump. Bump. Ooh, some contacts. Now look at these guys. There are two. IFF, Identification Friend or Foe, software associated with our radar has queried the two contacts. The one on the left has responded with the correct code and therefore is displayed as a solid circle. A circle denotes a friendly contact. That's important. You do not shoot at circles. He's on our side. On the other hand, a solid dash represents a maybe not so friendly contact and presumably is the enemy. As far as the sim is concerned, if you're playing single player, those you can shoot. But if you're flying online and there's an AWACS in the neighborhood, I'd give them a call to verify that it's a bona fide target. Okay, let's recenter the radar scan and let's play around with the scan volume a bit. Move the TDC up to their range so that you'll know what part of the sky they're flying through. Now watch the upper and lower limit numbers on the vertical volume scale. We'll start by shifting the scan volume further down. Still both there. Down even more. Okay, we've lost the contact on the right. He's fading. So he's above 9,000 feet. The contact on the left, however, is somewhere between ground level and 9,000 feet. Shift the volume up a bit, and there he is again. So the enemy contact is more or less flying at our altitude, while the friendly is flying closer to the ground. Okay, I've recentered the scan volume with control I. Now, if we had been flying merrily along, never shifting our scan zone up or down, and these guys have been closer in, we might have missed one or both of them until too late. So, uh-oh. An F-4's radar just lit us up. We need to find him. Let's start by looking closer in. Let's move the TDC to a closer range. Watch the vertical limit scale for this part of the sky while I shift the scan volume down. And there he is. Thankfully, he's a friendly. Now, notice what's happening out at 60 nautical miles. We shifted the scan volume down and we're losing the bad guy. We shifted our radar below him. At 25 nautical miles, we're not seeing above 11,000 feet. At 60, it's even worse. We don't see above 8,000. Here's a little graph to help you visualize what's going on. Our radar scan area is that white area ahead of our nose. Anything in the black is stuff that we can't see. With our radar slewed down at this angle, we won't see anything above 11,000 feet at 25 nautical miles. At 60 nautical miles, the altitude drops to 8,000 feet. If you kept on extending the graph, by the time you reached oh, 160 nautical miles, you'd be looking below the horizon. So both range and antenna elevation are extremely important. Okay, back in the cockpit, let's raise the scan volume a bit and see if we can't reacquire the guy we lost. And there he is. Okay, so for the moment, anyway, we have everybody back. But this isn't going to last for long. Not with the different ranges and altitudes involved. A quick check, we're scanning up to 29,000 feet at the bad guy's range. But we raised the scan and now we're losing our F4. In fact, our lower limit where he's flying is 4,000 feet. He's literally flying below our radar. Drop the scan again and reacquire. 
We've got him again, but now we've lost the enemy contact out at 45 nautical miles because he's now above our radar scan. Fun, isn't it? See, out where he is, we're only scanning up to 9,000 feet. If nothing else, this should demonstrate the importance of shifting that scan volume up and down. And use the TDC to keep track of the altitude limits for the range you're interested in. If you don't, someday you'll miss something important, and you'll die because of it. Okay, I've recentered the scan. Once again, the close range friendly is fading, but we've got both 40 nautical mile contacts back on the VSD. I've switched to the narrower 60 degree asthma sweep, 30 degrees to either side of our nose. And now I'm going to turn away. Watch how the contacts disappear as they fall outside the narrower sweep. There goes the friendly. And there goes the bad guy. Both are now outside the narrower horizontal scan limits. Okay, let's turn back into them and reacquire. There's the bad guy back again. And the friendly. By now, that friendly F4 must be behind us. Okay, a few things to consider. Whether you are looking up and down or side to side, the closer you are to our nose, the less sky you sweep. Think of your scan volume as a pyramid tipped on its side with its pointy top touching our aircraft's nose. The further you move downrange, the wider and taller the pyramid gets. The same is true here. At long ranges, you can sometimes get away with being lazy. But as the range closes, you have to be much more aggressive in searching the sky. Keep that scan volume moving. If you don't, you might miss something that can kill you. And always remember that those altitude limit circles are tied to the TDC. Hopefully, by now you've realized that the long-range search mode provides you with very little contact information. You know it's there, you know it's range, and very little else. In fact, this mode is sometimes referred to as range wall scan mode for the obvious reason. Although we have a missile selected, in our case an AIM-120, we haven't focused its attention on any target yet. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the HUD during all this. This is the AIM-120's ready state. It's waiting for us to direct it towards the target. And since we haven't yet directed it with the ANAPG-63 radar, we are in visual mode. In this mode, we will be using the AIM-120's own seeker field of view to direct it towards the target. So this is actually a within visual range missile mode completely divorced from our aircraft's radar. But more on this at another time. Okay, so what else do we see here? Well, in the lower left corner, the type of missile we have selected and how many we still have available. Below this field are our aircraft's airspeed expressed as Mach and our G loading, which currently is 1G. We'll cover all this in greater detail along with other within visual range and BVR modes in future training flights. But right now it's time to head for home. That concludes this training fight. Thank you. You have control. See you at the O Club.